Hi everyone, I'm Rockin' Robin from CookingMexicanRecipes.com and today I'm going to be making some homemade chocolate ice cream. Now I don't know about you, but I am a fanatic when it comes to chocolate ice cream. I want to find that perfect balance between the texture and the creaminess where you know it's not so rich that you can't eat very much ice cream and the chocolatey flavor that is not too overpowering and certainly not too sweet. So I think I found it with this recipe and I can't wait to show it to you. So stay right there, I'll be right back. So let's get started with our recipe, but first I'm going to go over some of the equipment you're going to need to make the ice cream. So I have a simple Cuisinart uh, ice cream maker here. It has an insert that you take out and you pop in the freezer for say 24 hours before you start making the ice cream. The other thing that's really helpful to have, this is a candy thermometer because we're going to be getting our custard up to you know like 170 degrees. So it's nice to have one of these. You don't have to have it, but it's just nice. All right, so now for our ingredients, we're going to need some heavy cream and some half and half. I got a couple cups of each here. And I want to encourage you to get some organic uh, brand of these items because it's just so much better. You have, you have less preservatives in it. Also, uh, we're going to need five eggs, and I'm going to separate those in a minute. Here is some Hershey's Dutch process cocoa. I want you to use that. We'll need some regular white sugar. And this is the uh, Scharfenberger uh, chocolate right here. This is 62% cacao and semi-sweet. And then we'll also need just a little bit of vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. Before we start cooking, I'm going to just go ahead and separate my eggs first. So just crack them into a bowl. Now, make sure your hands are washed when you do this. So you're going to pour this egg yolk gently right into your hand and you're just going to toss it back and forth until the egg whites just fall through your fingers, okay? And then you're going to place your other, your egg yolk into another bowl. So we'll do that one more time just so you got a good view of that. And you can save your egg whites for tomorrow's breakfast and make a nice little omelet with them. So this goes pretty quick. And I'll go ahead and finish all this up, rest of these, and then we'll move into our chocolate. Next comes our chocolate. Now all we want to do here is just do a rough chop just to break it up a little bit so that when we add it to the custard, it will melt and blend in very easily. Now we're ready to start cooking. So grab yourself a nice pan like this. I've got a nice good sized pan here. Got my temperature on low and we're going to add our uh, half and half to the pan and the heavy whipping cream and the sugar. Now I want to get this up to, oh I want to say, you know, warm. Get it warmed up before I add the cocoa. So I'm going to give this a stir. Our milk is warming up so now I'm going to add the Hershey's cocoa to the pan and the warm milk will help it dissolve easier. And I'm going to add my pinch of salt. Keep whisking until the cocoa powder is completely dissolved into the cream. And now we're going we're gonna to monitor the temperature. I've got this still on medium low. And that's where my candy thermometer comes in handy. So I'm going to be looking for this temperature to get up to about 165, 170, somewhere in there. I don't want this to boil. I've been babying this, stirring it pretty constantly, letting this temperature get up very gradually. Oh, it's just about at 165, so just keep watching it and stirring it and let it come up gradually. Okay, so we're about there now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the heat for a minute. And I'm going to come over here to my eggs and I'm going to break the yolks up a little bit. And I'm going to pour just about a cup's worth of this hot mixture slowly into this dish with the eggs and I'm going to whisk constantly. This is tempering the eggs. Okay, and I don't want them to scramble. So that's why we're just pouring a little bit in here at a time. It brings the temperature of them up gradually so that I can add them back to the mixture. Alright, that should do it. So I'll put that back down. I'm going to turn the temperature back to low and I'm going to add this mixture while whisking back into our chocolate. Now what we're going to do is 
put the temperature back up to medium low and we're going to cook this for about five minutes. I'm going to stir it. I'm going to be watching it like a hawk and I'm going to get the temperature up to about 170, 175. So I've been stirring this. You could probably tell that it's thickened up. It's now up to about 175 and another way to tell is that it's done is to put a spoon in and you see how it coats the back of the spoon and it doesn't go away that means you've cooked your eggs completely what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to pour this through this strainer here just in case we ended up with any little lumps I want my ice cream to be as smooth as possible and this is going to capture that pour that in and I'll lift the strainer up and you can see that it did get a few little clumps in there so that's great. I'm going to drop a little bit of vanilla extract in here, probably an eighth of a teaspoon, just a little bit, and the chocolate. This is that chocolate we chopped up earlier. I'll place it in here and it's going to melt and we're going to stir it until it's completely dissolved. So now all we have to do to cool this off is place this, this big bowl here has a little bit of water in it and I'm going to place my hot bowl in it and I'm going to add some of these ice cubes to it and create an ice bath and this is going to cool this down uh, pretty quickly and then after this gets cool enough I'll put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours but you want this mixture to be completely cold before you put it in your ice cream maker our chocolate ice cream mixture has been chilling overnight in the refrigerator, so it's been about 24 hours. So now what we're going to do is uh, put it in the ice cream maker and churn it. So I've got the insert in, and then you put in the part that churns it, set that in there, and then you pour in your mixture. Then you put the lid on, and we're going to let this churn for about 25 minutes. It's the moment of truth. All right, here we go. The ice cream is done. It's been about almost 25 minutes and I can't wait. All right, so, oh boy, it's getting pretty frozen in there. Look at that. Creamy, delicious. Oh my God, this looks so good. Let's scrape some of that off. Now, right now it's soft serve and I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop a little bit out so if you like soft serve, definitely try it now. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And it definitely will, will firm up. In fact, sometimes, depending on how cold your freezer is, it might even get a little too frozen. So what you can do there is just pull your ice cream out, you know, maybe let it sit out for five or ten minutes, softens up a little bit, and you're good to go. Ready for the taste. Oh my. Mmm. Wow. Guys. You're gonna love this. This is perfect chocolate ice cream. It's got the right texture. It's creamy, but it's not too creamy. It's not too rich. I mean, I could eat the whole doggone thing, I think. Mmm. Oh my goodness. It's not too sweet. The chocolate flavor is spot on perfect. Guys, I hope you'll try this recipe. You are gonna love it. I just know it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions at all about this recipe or how to make ice cream, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. All right, well, be sure and subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And if you want to also head on over to my website at cookingmexicanrecipes.com. I have a bunch of Mexican recipes over there for you to try. Thanks for watching. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make my steak fajita recipe. And we're going to serve this up with some grilled bell peppers and onions, and we're going to top it off with guac.